Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Always exciting to be back. Today we're going to be looking at BYD. Yeah, BYD, the Chinese electric vehicle and battery manufacturer. And they are making some huge moves internationally. They really are. So we're going to try to figure out what that means for the future of the EV market. Sounds good. So to do this, we've got two kind of key sources of information today. All right, lay it on me. So first we have a report from CLSA. They're a brokerage firm, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. And uh, and then we have a report from CX Securities. Okay. And they're both taking a look at kind of BYD's global ambitions and what it means for the ED market as a whole. Awesome. Well, let's dive in. Well, both of the reports actually point to one thing first and foremost. What's that? That BYD has some serious sales momentum. They really do. CLSA is actually predicting that BYD could sell at least 4 million cars in 2024. Meow. And then a whopping 5 million in 2025. Those are some serious numbers. Yeah. So, especially for a company that's, you know, relatively new to markets outside of China. Right. And CLSA actually had the chance to observe BYD's operations uh, firsthand. Oh, really? Yeah. They did a management roadshow and some on the ground research over in Europe. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, what were their main takeaways? Well, uh, one of the things they noticed is that they could hit this crazy milestone okay. of 500,000 car sales in a single month. Half a million cars. Yeah. In just one month. Isn't that wild? That's incredible. It shows just how much demand there is for these vehicles. Right. So I think the natural next question is, okay, they're selling a lot of cars. Yeah. But are they making any money? Right. Are they profitable? Exactly. And that's a question that CLSA actually addresses head on in their report. Okay, good. And they're expecting BYD's net profit per car to improve in the latter half of 2024. So they're not just growing, they're growing sustainably. Exactly. Uh -huh. So it seems like they are on the right track. Yeah, for sure. And they have some pretty ambitious plans for expansion, particularly in Europe. I've heard a little bit about this. What are they thinking? So CLSA is reporting that BYD wants to have 600 dealerships across Europe by 2025. Okay. And they're shooting for 1,000 by 2026. Wow. Yeah. So they're not messing around? No, they are not. And on top of that, they're going to be introducing 11 new models. 11 new models? Yeah. Wow. Okay. And what kind of models are we talking about here? So it's going to be a mix of plug-in hybrids and pure electric vehicles. Gotcha. So they're really trying to appeal to a wide range of customers. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's really smart because different countries in Europe have varying levels of EV adoption and infrastructure. Makes sense. you got to play to your audience, right? Right. And it seems like BYD is really kind of understanding the nuances of each market they're trying to enter. Yeah. Well, it seems like they're off to a good start. Yeah, I think so too. So we talked about Europe, but what about other parts of the world? Are they focusing on any other regions? Yeah, so CLSA highlights that BYD is actually gaining some market share in Southeast Asia. Interesting. Which is kind of a big deal because hybrid vehicles have been really popular there. Right, so they're really making inroads even in markets where you wouldn't necessarily expect them to be as strong. Exactly, and, uh, and I think this actually might have something to do with their manufacturing strategy. Okay, how so? Well, CLSA mentions that BYD has a new plant in Indonesia, uh -huh. and it has an annual capacity of 300,000 cars, and it's already under construction. Wow, so they're not wasting any time. No, they're not. It seems like they're really trying to build out a truly global production network. Yeah, and that's something that actually CIDA Securities also emphasizes in their report. I'm curious to hear more about what CIDX has to say. Yeah, me too. I mean, it sounds like BYD is learning from the playbook of other successful EV makers like Tesla. Absolutely. You know, building factories all over the world to be closer to their customers mm -hmm. and gain that competitive edge. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that strategy pays off for them the same way it has for others. It definitely will be. But let's not forget that BYD is facing some headwinds too. Oh, right. Like what? Well, particularly when it comes to expanding into Europe. The EU has imposed this countervailing duty uh -huh. on Chinese electric vehicles. Right. So that could definitely impact their profitability. Exactly. And it might even force them to adjust their strategy in the region. Well, how do they plan to deal with that? Well, CDX believes that BYD can still maintain profitability even with the tariff. Okay. Potentially by shifting their focus to plug-in hybrids. Oh, interesting, because those aren't subject to the duty yet. 
Exactly. So it seems like they're being pretty clever about adapting to the regulatory landscape. Yeah, they're not just reacting to the market, they're anticipating it. Right. And that kind of forward thinking is going to be essential for them to succeed in these new markets. Yeah, but navigating those trade policies is just one piece of the puzzle. Sure. BYD's entry into these new markets is going to shake things up for everyone. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the existing players react. CDEX actually has this really interesting analogy for this. Oh, yeah. What do they call it? They call it the catfish effect. The catfish effect. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. So imagine you've got this tank full of fish. Okay. And you introduce a catfish into the mix. Right. It kind of shakes things up, right? Definitely. The catfish forces all the other fish to become more active, more alert. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Exactly. BYD is that catfish in the global auto market. Oh, I like that. Their competitive pricing, their technology, their production capacity. Uh -huh. It's forcing all the other automakers to adapt and evolve. So they're not just changing the game for themselves. They're pushing the entire industry forward. Exactly. And that's why this catfish effect is so important. Okay. And why is that? It could lead to faster EV adoption. Okay. Better technology and even lower prices for everyone. Wow. So that's a win-win for consumers. Absolutely. And it's a win for the planet, too. Right, because it could lead to a more sustainable transportation future. Exactly. One of the things that's interesting about BYD is their commitment to vertical integration. Yeah, I was actually yeah. wondering about that. CLSA mentioned their battery technology as a key advantage. Right. Well, vertical integration means they control the entire process from sourcing raw materials to manufacturing the battery pack. So they're not relying on other companies. Nope. They even produce their own battery cells. Wow, that's pretty impressive. It gives them a lot more control over quality cost and the whole supply chain. Yeah, that makes sense. And it seems like it's working for them. It really does. CLSA is actually predicting that BYD could hit a wholesale volume of 500,000 cars in a single month. 500,000. In just one month. That's mind-blowing. It really shows how efficient their operations are and how quickly they can scale up production. Yeah, and it makes you wonder, are we on the verge of a major shift in the global automotive landscape? It's definitely possible. I mean, for so long, the industry has been dominated by just a handful of players. Mm -hmm. Right. The big names we all know. Exactly. But BYD is proving that even the most established industries can be disrupted. Yeah. It's a good reminder that innovation and agility are key. Absolutely. And BYD is a great example of a company that's embracing both. It's pretty amazing to see how quickly they're gaining traction. Especially in markets where you might not expect it, like Southeast Asia. Yeah, CLSA noted that they're even outperforming hybrids in some of those regions. Which is really impressive, considering how popular hybrids have been there. It seems like BYD is really good at adapting its strategy to different parts of the world. They are. Like in Europe, they're leveraging plug-in hybrids to get around those EU tariffs. Right. And then in Southeast Asia, they're going head-to-head -head with hybrids on their home turf. Exactly. It shows a deep understanding of those markets and what consumers are looking for. And let's not forget about the impact of local production. Right. That's going to be huge for them. CLSA mentioned that new plant in Indonesia. Yeah, and CIX highlighted their plans for production in Thailand and Brazil as well. So they're really thinking long term. Absolutely. Reducing their reliance on imports and tailoring their cars to local markets. It's clear that BYD has some very ambitious goals. They do, and it'll be fascinating to see how they achieve them. With all this talk about BYD's growth and expansion, though. Yeah. We haven't really talked about what it means for the average person. You're right. We've been so focused on the big picture. So let's bring it back down to earth for a moment. Okay. What does BYD's success actually mean for you, the listener? Well, that's a great question, and it's something we're going to explore in the final part of our deep dive. All right, so stay tuned. We'll connect all these trends and insights back to your daily life and your decisions as a consumer. So let's talk about what BYD's success could mean for your wallet. Okay. That's always a good place to start. As BYD expands and produces more cars, uh -huh. they're putting pressure on other automakers to lower their prices. So we could see more affordable electric vehicles hitting the market. Exactly. And not just lower prices, but more options. Too. Oh, that's interesting. As demand increases, mm -hmm. we'll likely see more charging stations popping up everywhere. Making EVs more convenient to own and use. Exactly. It's like BYD is creating this ripple effect. Yeah. Making electric vehicles a more realistic option for everyone. So they're accelerating the shift to a more sustainable future. That's the idea. And it's not just about price either. Oh, okay. What else? Well, think about their battery technology. Right. They're constantly innovating, uh -huh. developing better batteries with longer ranges, faster charging, and improved safety. 
So even if someone doesn't buy a BYD, yeah. they could still benefit from these advancements. Absolutely. The entire industry is being pushed forward. So BYD's rise is really shaking things up. It is. For decades, the auto industry has been dominated by the same big players. Right. But BYD is showing that even the most established industries can be disrupted. Like a changing of the guard? Exactly. The old rules don't apply anymore. And companies that embrace electric mobility are going to have a real advantage. For sure. And this is happening all over the world. Right. BYD isn't just focused on China. Nope. They want to be a global force in the EV market. So what does this all mean for our listeners? It means we're all part of this incredible transformation. Yeah. The decisions we make as consumers, as investors, yeah. even as citizens, right. can shape the future of transportation. So it's an exciting time to be following this industry. It really is. That brings us to the end of our deep dive into BYD. I hope you all enjoyed it. We've learned a lot about their growth, their technology, and their impact on the auto market. They're a company to watch, for sure. And the EV revolution is well underway. I can't wait to see what happens next. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.